Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. We sit them down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and buy your goods for cash on the spot today. 190 pounds. 50 pounds. Oh, I think that's a little bit mean. The alternative is to place the same goods into a local auction and hope to get a little bit more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Penrith in Cumbria. There's a good crowd of people here. They've brought along their treasures and their antiques. They want to do business. They want to walk away with the real deal. It's a bright new day in the dealer's den. And first up, Karen's got diamonds that will be sure to tempt money onto the table. Welcome to the show, I'm Karen. Hi. And quite a super little piece of jewellery I've got here. Now, yeah. is this a family piece or something you've got recently? It's, uh, I inherited off my auntie, who probably passed away about three, four years ago now. Um, and it's just been sat in a drawer, so I just thought I'd bring it along today. Not your style, really? Oh, it's actually quite pretty, but I don't really wear brooches, and um, no, I just thought someone else might appreciate it. Yeah, get some money for yeah. it and remember auntie. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can see straight away as diamonds, isn't it? Yeah. I expect you know. That, don't <laughs> you? I, don't need, I don't need to tell you that. Um, right. Oh, there are some marks on it, and I can see it's 18 carat. And we've got quite an array of diamonds in the shape of a very pretty little brooch here, haven't we? Yeah. So there's 10 on the outside on these sort of spurts coming out here. Yeah. Plus part of the bow there. So in actual diamond count, there's quite quite a few there. It's not actually that old. It's sort of about 20, 30 years old, isn't right. it? Right. I've got to just take a minute and work out what I'm going to offer you. Um, I bet that cost an absolute blimmin' fortune not that long ago. 100. 200. 280. <laughs> well, you know, normally at this stage, I'm normally leaning over to Karen and saying, Karen, where's the rest of the money? But I have to say this. The independent value on the auctioneer, for some reason, I thought were very low. 80 to 120, 1 to 150, I thought was extremely conservative. Mm. There's not a lot in weight there, but, you know, small diamonds, very attractive. So I'm going to say... You don't think I'm paying too much then, David? Well, no, Karen. I was going to ask for another 20 quid, but I'm trying to be a little bit <laughs> conservative myself. I think, in fairness, our dealer has made the running. Yeah. She's come in there way in front of the independent valuer. So I'm going to say, Karen, on this occasion, good on you, girl. You're putting the money down. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm getting a bit nervous now. I think, I think you'd better take that before it starts coming away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Got brilliant. To Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you very much. Well, that's Karen off to a flying start. Hello, I'm Henry Nichols. I'm Jill. Hello, Hello, Jill. Nice to see you. This next item has been given a lot of loving care to bring it back to life. But will Henry offer more than breadcrumbs for it? Um, I see you brought in what looks to me to be like a book illustration. Um, what's the history of it? I bought it an, at auction and it was unframed and I bought it with some old photographs and I just... I, there's something about it that appealed to me. Um, I buy pictures and I like doing them up and putting them in frames and this one was a bit dirty, so I rubbed some breadcrumbs on it and cleaned it up and framed it. OK. And how long have you had her? About 12 months. About 12 months. Yes. A little while then. And what we have here is a nice watercolour of a girl with a bonnet holding her umbrella. She's monogrammed at the bottom here um, by the artist, but there's no other real information on the front. Well, we have got some more, because on the back, I think it's a book plate, and I have put some information. OK. I have shown some information that was... Oh, let's have a look. There. OK. OK, yes, it says painted by EVE, um, and the book is The Fleeting Wonder that is called Childhood. Um, according to this, section 5, page 33, I've got an umbrella. <laughs> How wonderful is that? Describes it all. It does indeed. So, Jill, tell me, why are you selling it? 
because I have lots of pictures now, I need to move some on and I like to make some money for charity and some money for myself so I can go and buy more pictures. Fantastic. OK, well, I think what we need to do is make you an offer on it and see how we go. Right. I think we're going to go 20, 40, 45 pounds. How does that seem? Yes, that's getting there. That's you're doing quite well on that. It, only it's an original only watercolour. Well. <laughs> okay, well, seeing seeing as you've done such a good job on cleaning it up and such a good job on framing it, I'm going to try one more fifty-five pounds. Well, that's quite fair because that will allow me to give some of the money to charity of my choice and will still allow me to make some profit too. So yes, I'm, I'm happy with that. OK, wonderful. Thank you very much indeed, Thank Jill. you very Thank much. Thank you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, you are? David. David. Here's a top tip for getting Joe's money. Make sure you've got everything ticking along nicely first. And you've brought in a... Stopwatch. Stopwatch. The unfortunate thing is, it's a stopwatch that don't go. A stopped stopwatch. It's a stopped stopwatch. How did you come to own it? Well, my mum's cousin gave me it, but I never used it because I already had a battery one. Right. It's a Hewer, which is later became Tag, didn't it? Tag Hewer. It's about as much use as a chocolate fire guard, really, isn't it? Yeah, why? I don't think, David, that I have room in my life for a stopped stopwatch. Right. So, I know the rules of the game are that I'm supposed to offer you my hard-earned lolly, but there is a point in a girl's life where she has to say no. And I'm afraid today is the day <laughs> that I am saying I draw the line at having to make an offer on a stopped stopwatch. Near enough. So would you like to go to auction? Well, it looks like you'll have to. It does. Right. Can you have some sympathy with that? Oh, aye. Oh, aye. Excellent. Right answer. Thank you very much for coming <laughs> in. I hope you enjoy the auction. It's been nice meeting you. <laughs> With Jo putting her foot firmly down, we're off to auction to see if David Brooks, the auctioneer, has more luck shifting the watch. Now, there is a bit of a problem with this. It doesn't actually work, does no, it? No. That's the thing that worries me. Someone comes to an auction, they check out the items, they pick up the stopwatch, uh, they try and wind it, no, it's not ticking, the finger is not rotating, and they think to themselves, how much is this going to cost us? To repair it so that's a problem the reserve is 40 quid is it going to sell it's coming up now stop 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 watch coming up we come now to lot 115a which is the 1960s uh, hoya stopwatch in its original box 50 pounds please 40 we have 40 pounds bid online 42 now 42 pounds for the hoya 45 now 48 48 pounds for the 60s Hoyer stopwatch at £48, has the bidding stopped? No, £50 now. £55. £55 now on the internet. £55 on the internet now at £55 and selling at £55. The gavel has gone down at £55. Take away commission. That means you're going home with £49 for a stopwatch that's stopped. Reaction? Sound. Sound. I'm going to say to you, when you buy on the internet, be careful, you need sometimes to inspect items such as a stopwatch that's stopped. Real deal, 49 quid. I didn't think we were going to sell that. Coming up. It has a signature of Walt Disney, 1938. The name may be big, but is the price taking the mickey? It does have a price up here of 3,500. Which I think is an exorbitant price. Uh, I do yeah. hope you didn't pay that. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Penrith 
in Cumbria. Hi, I'm Ian. On Ian's table is a sketchbook signed Walt Disney with a heavy price tag from the past, but is it the real deal? Wonderful little sketchbook. Yeah. Walt Disney, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Well, tell us a little bit about it. How did you acquire it, firstly? Uh, well, I bought it from auction about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And but are you a collector or a dealer? Do you... Oh, and some of the ones I like to keep, but uh, sell, sell them one after, after a bit. After you've had enough of them, you get rid of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's have a look inside. It's in very good condition. Now, it does have a price up here of 3,500, yeah. first edition, which I think is an exorbitant price. Uh, I do yeah. hope you didn't pay that. Uh, no, that must have been somebody getting very optimistic in the past. Very, very optimistic, I think. It has a signature of Walt Disney, 1938. I personally don't think it is his signature. Do you? I think it's signed by one of his secretaries. Yes, one of the secretaries. Because that's what he had done. Yes, that's what they did. So, unfortunately, if it was signed by him, I'd pay you heavily for it. I'd mm. pay you 3,500, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going inside, look. I mean, these illustrations are very colorful. I mean, the condition is absolutely beautiful. I'm surprised, as a collector of books, that you even want to sell it. Well, it's, it's a nice book, but uh, I've, I've had it here, so... Let's go to one of the characters inside. What a smile. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? I think it's absolutely charming. But when it comes to value, I'm going to take a guess at it from what I think is worth to me, and then I'm going to leave it up to you yeah. whether you accept my offer or not. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. I think it's worth a bit more than that. You think it's a bit more than yeah. that? Well, let's say I go another 50. 350. I well, still think it's worth a bit more than that. OK. Um, I'm going to give you 400. OK. So we have now 400 on the table. Before you give me your final decision, think about it. You know, I don't know what you paid for it. Be absolutely sure that that is the offer you're prepared to accept. Yeah. And if you're happy with it, great. Yeah, I'll accept You're that. happy to yeah. accept yeah. it. 400 is the deal. So how much did you pay for it? About 400. About 400. Fantastic. So thank you once again for bringing it on. Thank Thanks. you. Well, after years of enjoyment, James makes his money back on the Disney book. Elizabeth, welcome to the show. Thank Please you for bringing me in. Next Lovely. up, will Karen still be throwing her cash around on this next item, or will she be running for the hills? So, something you've acquired recently, or is it a family book? No, I've had it about 20 years. I bought it in auction. Did you? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're a bit of an auction girl, are you? Mm -hmm. yes. So what, what grabbed you about this painting, then? I just thought it was a bit different. Yeah. And it's uh, light oils, so it, it's, you know, quite pleased with it. It looks like some sort of alpine scene. Yes. Or... Is it signed at all on the front? I haven't seen a signature. No. But sometimes they're under the frame, aren't they? Possibly. Yes. Done on, on board. So here we have a late Victorian oil alpine scene done on board. It's, it's very, very nice, but it's nothing, in my opinion, if you don't mind me saying, that special. It's just a really mm -hmm. nice painting that's going to grab somebody like yourself mm -hmm. if it went to auction mm -hmm. or for a dealer like myself. So um, I'm not going to get overexcited when I do the oh bidding. Dear. Sorry. But um, I'll try and be fair with you. But you don't have to take my money. 20, 40, 50 pounds, Elizabeth. Oh, I think that's a little bit mean. Can do you? Not... you? Yes, I think you can give me a bit more than that. Um, I don't know that I can because, to be honest, I've got a million of these. Yeah. I seriously have. I mean, it is a decent quality painting. It has got a very nice Victorian frame on it. Mm -hmm. Look, I'll swap that tenner and I'll replace it with a 20. Um, I don't think it's a brilliant offer, but I think it reflects my market value of the painting. Um, it's your gamble whether you think you do better at auction. Do you, do you rate it quite a bit more than what I'm putting down? Well, if you put another 20 down, I'd be quite happy. 
I and know, that would be a deal. But honestly, I wanted to pay fifty yeah. pounds. Not even another ten. Please. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, I feel so mean because you've asked mm. so nice. Honestly, if it went to auction, I'm fairly confident that is what it would fetch. Yes. Um, oh, well, I'll go with what you offer. OK. All right. Brilliant. We've got a deal. Thank you very much. Mm. It's been lovely to meet mm. you. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is an item that could help a soldier find his way. But will Jo be able to navigate her way to a cash settlement? And you've brought in this compass. Can you tell me how you come to own it? I was at an auction uh, 30 odd years ago, and there's a box under the table, and the box is packed with papers and bits of other odds and ends. I bought the box, it was about £3, and uh, that was among the other bits and pieces in the bottom. All right. Well, I have to say, I quite like this. It's got sort of charm to it. I like the leather case and it's sort of old schoolness. First World War. First World War and it's got the retailer's name on the little solid leather case here and it says T French and Sons, London, 1916. But it then, we go to this and it's got a name that I'm sure that people will have heard before and it's S Morden and Co, which is Samson Morden. And and I like to deal in their silver pieces. And it's dated 1918, which was at the end of the First World War. And we've got the War Office mark, isn't it? The, yes. I think they the called it the Crow's, Crow's foot. foot or something like that. I think it's really nice. This is brass. That folds away and we all, well, I assume, that it's, so you can hang it up as well. No, it, it's... Uh... You used to put your thumb in it like that. And if you see that, it acts as a reflector. And it, you can see the uh, the line through there points, reflects up from there. So you could put it on your map and uh, let the compass be. It's cracking. Right. OK. Um, how much do you want for it? Well, I'm open to offers. Everybody is that sits in that chair. <laughs> See what we can do. Ten. Twenty. Thirty pounds. No. Nope. Forty pounds. No. Nope. Forty-five pounds. And I'm nearly cooked. I have to warn you. I'm nearly cooked. Take that black one out of the one with five on and put one of the others. I'll tell you what, we'll scoop that lot up and swap it for one of them. Looks nice, that. It's a pretty colour. Don't see many of them. No. <laughs> it's a pretty colour. That's my offer for it. That's... Well, that's it then. We'll have a deal then. We've got a deal on that? A deal. Excellent. Lovely. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Pleased with the colour of Joe's money, Gordon's made a tidy profit of £47 on that mixed box he bought years ago. Coming up, there are nine games afoot on Karen's table. If I put 20 quid down on the table then, do you dislike it that much? I like it a lot more than that. Not <laughs> 20 quid, ah, you're a bit canny, Bernie, aren't you? <laughs> Find out whose tactics win out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Penrith in Cumbria. Bernie, welcome to the Hello. show. Next up, Karen's got a tempting piece on the table, but is it too dear to its owner? Now, tell me all about this little bit of pottery you've got here. Um, it's been in the family, I think on my dad's side, either um, his mum or auntie or something. Um, my mum wasn't entirely sure when I asked her, but I've just had it for about the last... 10 or 12 years, and I do use it. Yeah. Um, and I like it. Do you? Uh, yeah. OK. <laughs> That's about as much as I know. So, I mean, it's, it's a particularly Art Deco vase, is, it? oh, is that right. the sort of thing you like? Have you got bits at home? Um, no, not at all. I'm not a collector or no. anything. I just quite liked it. And my mum didn't, so she said, yeah, you can have it. So <laughs> OK, let's have a look. Um, let's have a look underneath. Aha! 
Ruskin. Right. In 1931, Ruskin, right. England. And there's also like an incised signature or something oh, right, there, okay. so presumably that's the potter. Ruskin pottery is quite an important English pottery, actually. Um, very prolific around the 1930s, almost famous for his wares about the 1930s. Started in the late 19th century and closed in about 1935. So this one, being dated about 1931, um, was made really four years before the factory closes, so it's a very late piece. And you've got, you've got almost, you've gone from the blue down to these orange, very, very art deco. I mean, they, they love particularly these bright orange colours. So, I think it might be worth something then. Possibly. Yeah, I like that, possibly. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've always liked it. My flowers at the moment are in my so washing put, up box. If I put 20 quid down on the table then, do you dislike it that much? I like it a lot more than that. A lot more than 20 quid. <laughs> ah, you're a bit canny, Bernie, aren't you? <laughs> right, OK. 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. Mm, I think I like it a little bit more than that. Are you sure? <laughs> OK. <laughs> right, 100 quid. Come on, Bernie, that's fair money. It, no, it is, it is. Just... You'd rather have 100 quid than the vase, wouldn't you? Because I'm sure you'd spend that on something much more interesting. Probably. I could spend a little bit on another vase. And another then... vase? Well, a, a cheaper vase. <laughs> <laughs> and then have something to splash out on, maybe. I don't know. A bit of a towards a holiday or something would be nice. nice. Yeah. So we're having a deal then, Bernie? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Very... Thanks thank very you. much. Being on the doorstep of the Lake District, David's taken time out to chat to Tricia Kerr, curator of the Keswick Museum, about the famous arts and crafts school that flourished here in the last century. Now, there's something fascinating about this museum. We were having a little chat earlier, and you were telling me about its formation and why it was formed. Uh, well, the museum itself was formed in 1897, but it was uh, one of the trustees was Canon... Hardwick Rawnsley. And this bronze plaque yes. is his image, of course. It is him, yes. And Canon Rawnsley also established the Keswick School of Industrial Art, and that's some of the items that we've brought along today to show you. Why did he form this arts and crafts school? He formed it uh, primarily because there was a lot of unemployment in Keswick, during the winter in particular, for labourers, boatmen, people like that. Now, was this people of all ages, or was it an encouragement to young people? Well, it was very much a, an encouragement to young people. Uh, it was a way of providing a skill which they could then use to actually generate income for themselves. And because it was a tourist town, there was an outlet for the work that they were producing. Now, let's have a look at the items. that These were all produced locally. Yes. Some in brass, some in gold, some in silver. And some in copper. And some in copper. Yes. The, uh, the copper was used because uh, Canon Ronsley's wife had actually trained in, in making copper items. She was an artist herself. And also because it dated back to the Elizabethan times, right. when Queen Elizabeth I brought in German miners and mined the copper in the area. And there was also silver mined in this area. They actually built a, a custom-built building, a beautiful arts and crafts building, which is housed the school. And at its largest, there were 61 craftspeople working Amazing. there. Yes. I mean, there was a lot of famous supporters of this scheme, there wasn't were, there? Yes. Come on, let's hear a few of them. Well, Beatrix Potter was very much in favour of this. Uh, she very much thought it as an alternative to the local labourers going out drinking at night. If they were in night school, making beautiful objects. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a, a good alternative. But she was a great supporter here, wasn't she? Oh, she was she? a huge You know, supporter. of agriculture, yes. of farms, of yes. land and so yes. forth. So I can yes. see her getting involved in this, yes. young people, training them, keeping them out of the pub, putting a craft into their hands. Yes. She said that it, Keswick was full of drink and raucous singing. <laughs> oh, it sounds a cracking place, doesn't it? Raucous singing as yes. well. OK, now Keswick Museum, it's got another name, hasn't it? What? It's Keswick Museum and Art Gallery and it's a Victorian cabinet of curiosities. Cabinet of curiosities. It's almost like Dickinson's real deal, a cabinet of curiosities. It is. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
can we say thank you for bringing along this fascinating um, collection. And you know, when you think about it, starting this arts and crafts school, it rings a bell with me. There's lots of young people in our country today that are looking for employment, that are looking for apprentice schemes, that are looking for training in their hands. What we want is another school rather like this training school for young people. I think that would go down well. Back to the dealer's den. Will Penrith prove a jewel for Ian as family pieces are brought out of the jewellery box and onto his table? Two brooches and a cameo ring. Yes. The brooch is nine carat, 14 carat and nine carat. Yes. Can you tell me a little about how you got them? Um, they were my mother's. Um, she had had them many years and we shared all the jewellery out between myself and two of the sisters. This is some of the collection. And why are you selling them? Uh, my daughter only likes silver and the two grandchildren, they're not interested. I mean, they stood, they're in a box at home. And Doing nothing? Doing nothing. The cameo ring is fascinating because the cameo itself is older than the actual ring, the shank, right. the shank section right. of the ring. But it makes a good marriage. Right. You know, it makes a substantial ring. This pearl brooch, which is nine carat, in the 70s and 80s, it was mass produced. Right. And they did it with pearls, they did it with turquoise, they did it with coral. And you could find them almost so everywhere. Common. So right. it's quite a late one. Yeah. That again, 60s, 70s, that pearl brooch is a very mm. popular design to wear on a, on a blazer or a jacket or mm. taking a scarf and just putting it to hold yeah. your scarf together. Very pretty. And the pearls, I must say, are all in very good condition. They haven't shelled. Because a lot of the time, people spray them with perfume right. and spoil the pearl. Spoil them. Yeah. yeah. I don't know yeah. if you have any idea what they're worth. I you don't have to tell me. It, no. <laughs> But and you have, have, have a rough yes, idea. Yes, I have a rough have idea, idea what I, I want. What you're yes. looking for. Yes. Mm, okay, yeah. this could be yeah. dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say 50, 100, 150, 170, 190 pounds. I would like a little bit more. You'd like a little bit more. Okay, let's say I take away the 40 and put a 50 down. <laughs> now I'll come in here just before you make a decision, Jeanette, and tell you what the independent valuers say and what our auctioneer says. 150 to 200, 180, 200. They're, they're all in that region, so right. 200 pounds is realistic. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, sir. <laughs> He's been a good boy today. He's putting his money down much faster. <laughs> well, when there are things I like, you know, I will pay for them. And 200 is a good offer. So what do you think? Yes, I'm very happy with that. Thank you very, very much. Very happy with it? It's been Wonderful. Lovely so, meeting you. Lovely meeting and you I'm too. With that. Thank so you we have much. a deal? We have a deal. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Coming up after the break... Well, what can I say? <laughs> um, a fantastic book of letters and autographs mm -hmm. of some of the most famous people yeah. Yeah. that the world has ever known. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Hello. Deal. Hi, now we all dream of finding Speak. hidden treasure in Thank an you. old chest, and this next item is a treasure trove of great names. And it's something that's grabbed the interest of the Duke and auctioneer David Brooks too. Well, what can I say? <laughs> um, a fantastic book of letters and autographs. Mm -hmm. um, if we look here, we've got the Duke of Wellington. I mean, That's what right. is the history of all this? Um, this was actually my father's book. Um, my father was a... Well, he wasn't an antiques dealer. He just, I think he was a wheeler dealer, more like. Um, and when he died, we were going through all his belongings and found this at the bottom of the gun cabinet. And then me and my mum had a look through one night and just, it was like being in a sweet shop. We were like, oh my God, there's, you know, because we didn't realise the content, we just left it in, 
in the cupboard. Um, and then we realised there was Pitt and Nightingale and I mean, and we all have got characters. a fantastic selection mm. of some of the most famous people yeah, yeah. that the world has ever known. I mean, one of my favourites here, which has got to be very rare, mm -hmm. is this wonderful letter here. Um, from Angelica Kaufmann, yeah. who was the, one of the most famous Austrian 18th century artists. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be a rare piece, this wonderful Duke of Wellington signature here. Yeah. And then if we turn the page over, really we've can. got underneath, if we could do it, let's do it like that, Mad King George III's yeah. handwriting here, which is again got to be a rare thing. Mm -hmm. And then Go one more over here. That's right, yeah. Turn it over. Do it very carefully. And we have that pad and bounder, George Bow Brum. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal collection here. Uh -huh. I really like the uh, Florence Nightingale. And, you know, having the sepia photograph over there as well, I think it's really sweet. Every now and again, we get something really speculative and interesting comes through the door. As soon as I saw this appear, I thought, wow, this is interesting. What's there is a collection of letters of famous names. With, they range through politicians to George III to, um, to the Iron Duke. Um, but one thing that jumps out to me is Angelica Kaufman, the artist. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a, a fabulous letter, isn't it? It's a, a, a historical document, yeah. really. Yeah. yeah. What for you, David, jumps out there? What's prominent there? Well, apart from the letter, which is something that really should be handled in its own right, you've got things that are attributed to, I think, Florence Nightingale, uh, John Ruskin again, you've got the sort of Lakes interest. Um, but a lot of it is just sort of attribution, really, as well. So they want carefully looking at, they're quite nice. OK. So where are you going to place your estimation? Well, that's interesting. I think you've got to at least put them into two lots. Um, for the letter, perhaps, I don't know, five to 800, potentially into the thousands, I think, for, for the collective lot there. Okay. I think what we've got here is a speculative lot. I think there's some potential with this, but let's see what our dealer, Henry, puts on the table. The question is, what's it really worth? That's the, that's that's the, the thing. That's the question, isn't it? So, I mean, obviously, in a way, it's a hard thing to value, but I will make you an offer on it, mm -hmm. OK? And we'll see how we go. OK. OK. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to offer you yeah. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500 pounds. Right. How does that seem? Um... Oh, David. <laughs> well, I've walked in at this stage because I've heard our dealer Henry say, how does that sound? Well, it sounds a very nice opening offer. Sometimes there is more of these letters and signatures around than you realise. Mm -hmm. You look at the Iron Duke and think, oh, extremely rare, one of the greatest uh, English heroes. But in, but in their period, in their time, writing letters was a daily occurrence. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, sometimes more letters per day. They wrote lots of letters. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say 500 pounds. It is a good start, but I don't think it's good enough. I think you would be better by offering this uh, through the sale room. Mm -hmm. You could pick up collectors from anywhere in the world. So I'm going to say on this particular lot, definitely auction is the way forward. <laughs> OK. I'll try and tempt you a little bit more, right. despite what David said. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go another 50, so that's 550, 600, mm -hmm. 650, mm -hmm. 700, and one more, 750. But that is my lot. OK. The choice is Decision yours. Time. It would... I quite like to see it go to auction in all honesty, because with the day of the internet and, you know, technology and information is so, you know, out there that there's going to be people from all over the world seeing this. And I think it, it needs to be appreciated by somebody else because it's been sat in a 
chest of drawers for the last 20 years and it just seems such a shame. So I think on this occasion I'm going to go to auction. OK. So, thank you very thank much you very indeed, much. Liz, for thank letting you. me have a good look through. Thank <laughs> you. You're welcome. Cheers. We've just seen Liz turn down Henry's substantial offer. And one more, 750. But that is my lot. But she's opted for auction, and the Duke's hatching a plan to maximise her chances. So what the auctioneer has advised is this. He's advised splitting off the autographed letter by Angelica Kaufman, and we're going to do that lot first, followed by another lot with the collective items all in that one. We've got 800 to 1,200 for the first lot estimation and 800 to 1,200 for the second lot. Um, there is a reserve of 800 on each. What's made Mum decided to sell this today? Retirement fund. Retirement fund? Yes, we like retirement it. Okay. fund. The question is, are the buyers here in the sale room? But more importantly, are they on the internet? Are they on the telephone? We're about to find out. It's coming up now. We come now to lot 155A, which is the uh, Angelica Kaufman, late 18th century letter. Good, interesting lot. Where can we start the bidding on this, please? £1,000? Start me at five, then, please. Start me at £500. They're calling for five. Are they biting at 500? 500 pounds. Any interest at 500? No, no bids in the room. No bids in the room. No. Bids the room. Nope. Disappointing. Okay, that one's failed. We're going to the next lot. lot I suspect e, that the second lot could fail also. Autographed letters and notelets. Good mixed, interesting lot there. And I've commission interest so I can start the bidding with me at £900, 115B. Well, there we are, you see. 900. The second lot has sprung to life at £900. I start at £900. Any further interest in the room or on the internet, it's with me 950 thank you. 950 on the internet, it's now 1000 Any further bid, it's with me at £1,000 now and selling at £1,000. It's gone down at £1,000. Right. We have a bit of commission to take off. I make that £900 because it's 10% here. Now, what's your first reaction for one lot? I'm quite surprised, actually, it went, yeah. Uh, I feel the same. I yeah. thought the better possibly was the Angelica uh -huh. Kaufman, but on the day, there were collectors that wanted that collection of formidable names. Remember, there was quite a lot of names there political, military, uh, and of course royalty. Mm -hmm. There were some really important names there. And so, £900 on the day is going home to Mum for the retirement fund. Uh, £1,000 under the gavel. Um, real deal, £900. We are a bit relieved. So, a fantastic result after all. And I wonder if Liz's dad knew what he was doing when he hid those papers away. Now, let's see if any of that look rubbed off on our dealers. Oh, I'm getting a bit nervous now. I think, <laughs> I think you'd better take that before it starts coming away. <laughs> Karen seemed to be flinging her money around. But with a £15 profit on the Alpine landscape, a £20 profit on the Ruskin bars, and a £40 profit on the white gold and diamond brooch, she's proved there was method in her madness. Henry's still admiring the watercolour, but hopes to shift it soon. Thank so we you. have a deal? We have a Thank deal. Thank you very much. Ian Thank sold you. the two brooches for £40, but hasn't sold the ring yet. And for the moment, he's still enjoying the Disney book. We've had a cracking day here in the sale room. There's been lots of action, lots of bidding, lots of buying. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time. The Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.